Hello, and welcome to today's session on Generative AI Search. My name is Chris Cook, and I work as a cloud solution architect at a company called Sweetbriar. I've been working with cloud technology for almost a decade, and I also have an extensive background in enterprise search with over 12 years spent architecting and delivering enterprise search solutions for Fortune 500 customers all around the globe. I understand the challenges with deploying search in the enterprise, and I know how to solve them using the cloud. My company, Sweetbriar, is a Google Premier Partner who specializes in connecting companies to the cloud. Today, I will show you how to use the cloud to quickly deliver a Google quality search experience in just a few minutes using your own data. In this session, you will learn how to build a Google quality search app and embed search in web pages or custom applications. Specifically, you will learn about a product called Vertex AI Search and Conversation a turnkey service built on the Vertex AI platform, which is all part of Google Cloud. So basically, the big idea here is that we can now let Google hire all of the expensive data scientists and practitioners to build and train these models, while we let our developers and analysts take advantage of the fruits of their labor. We'll dig into all of this a bit deeper, and I have some other visuals to share before we get into the demo. So let's get going. So before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the GSA. This was the big, bad, original enterprise search product from Google, perfect for website search or company documents behind the firewall. They were a snap to set up, configure and maintain, plus they look kind of cool. I personally racked and stacked dozens of these things over the years. 52 pounds of blazingly fast search power encased in a custom built Dell R720 server that had a very unique color and front bezel. If you had one in your data center then everybody knew where it was. These things once sold like ice water on a hot day, a real game changer for site search. It seems like everybody had one. As you can see, even the Hoff himself, David Hasselhoff, got caught up in all the hype and did some promotional work for the GSA. Here he is in, in uh, Google's London headquarters back in the summer of 2006, proudly holding up an appliance for a photo op. So as you can see, this is a physical piece of hardware and there was no pay as you go option like we have today with the cloud. Uh, this needed to be shipped somewhere, then racked, initially configured on the network before you could even think about being productive in any meaningful way. The GSA required a three year commitment and started at $15,000 per year for half a million docs. And you could scale it up to 10 million docs if you just paid for a bigger license key. Right. And, and you couldn't get just one, you needed one for development and typically two for production, sometimes tests as well. Uh, the typical co configuration was three appliances. Right. It's a, a thirty dollars to $40,000 annual subscription just to get out of the gate with enterprise search. To go from, I want search on my website, to actually having search on your website could literally take months because of all the logistics of planning, billing, shipping, racking, setup configuration, etc. Today, we're at a point where we can go from I want search on my website to actually having search on your website before going to bed that very same day. With the cloud, we can skip the drop shipping of hardware, upfront investments and long term commitments and get turnkey enterprise search in just a few clicks. This is insanely easy. Developers can quickly build new experiences such as custom search engines or conversational apps using out-of-the-box templates and APIs. Vertex AI Search and Conversation brings together the power of deep information retrieval, state-of-the-art natural language processing, and the latest in large language models to understand user intent and return the most relevant results to the user. Let's reveal some of the features available uh, right out of the box. We can quickly set up uh, Google quality multimodal and multi-turn search experiences for customers and employees. We can ground uh, search results in our own enterprise data or even combine that with LLM knowledge. Uh, use enterprise access controls to ensure information is surfaced only to users who have access. There are data connectors and extensions for backend systems to read data and take actions with third-party applications like JIRA Salesforce or Confluence. Vector search for highly scalable vector embedding search across different types of data. Helpful features like AI powered summarization, citations, relevant scores and LLM style prompting to help in knowledge discovery. 
out of the box natural language understanding and semantic search. So we can improve the user search experience without uh, having to implement complex natural language processing techniques. Out of the box, uh, we get capability to understand synonyms, correct spellings, and auto suggest searches. So now we can get high quality search experience without needing to implement <clears throat> or maintain any systems that perform keyword searches or pattern matching. Out of the box recommendations. So state of the art machine learning based content and metadata understanding that allows your users to quickly find content that's similar to the content that they're currently viewing. So use uh, the search and conversation page in the cloud console, or you can use Google search API to easily set up a, a search app for your public websites or for your structured or unstructured documents. There's also a widget to easily integrate search into your website. And it's the, it's the widget and the API that's used to integrate uh, into your web and applications. And, um, and it's the, the widget itself that'll get you your website tonight. So let's take a few minutes to get a deeper understanding of the Vertex AI platform. Vertex is a service uh, hosted on Google's cloud platform. As you may know, AI needs a boatload of processing power for daily operations. And as it turns out, graphics cards, those GPUs are extremely good at doing AI because of their high memory capacity and parallel processing ability. However, graphics cards are built for generating images and visual content and not necessarily ideal for all types of AI processing. So Google decided uh, to build a new line of processors called TPUs or tensor processing units. And these are designed to perform very specific AI workloads much more efficiently. So on top of all of this hardened and secure physical infrastructure is where Vertex sits. The Vertex AI platform is a cloud-based Jupyter Lab environment for data science and ML development. This is a data scientist Disneyland, a theme park of AI tools and templates on a platform that allows them to manage the full life cycle of ML models. So think of it as Willy Wonka's AI ML factory, where developers can punch their golden ticket to adventure. This AI platform is used by data scientists and AI practitioners and, uh, to seed the, uh, the model garden uh, with a collection of pre-trained production ready models uh, that can be used for various tasks, such as generation. So think of text to video or grabbing a stable diffusion model for some quick image generation. So you can pick a model for image or video classification, uh, for example, sentiment analysis or content moderation. There are models for recognition, such as a person or a vehicle detector, natural language processing for entity syntax or sentiment analysis, and even translation for over 200 language, languages. It's a digital garden of ML models so Google will take care of managing the retraining of them and training new ones over time. You just pick the ones you want and pay for what you put through it. Now, developers and analysts can use these models and this platform to develop products and solutions to solve business challenges throughout the organization using AI. So naturally, Google is gonna do what Google does. They're gonna flex their AI muscles and they're gonna bake some key products and solutions directly into the platform. Specifically, the focus of today's session to learn about search, but conversation or chatbots, it's tightly related. They can share the same backend data sources, but the front, front end configurations and integrations are different enough to warrant uh, their own separate sessions. There are also fully baked AI solutions available as a service, such as Context Center AI and Documenting AI. We're, we're only gonna be focusing on search today, but I think it's important to understand where it fits into the overall ecosystem. So let's quickly cover domain and URL verification. Um, if you plan to index websites, you will most likely want to verify your domain or website in order to enable the Gen AI features which require advanced indexing. Verification, it's a one-time process and it's quite easy. However, you will need to prepare and coordinate this activity with whoever has permission to change DNS or the company website. Domain verification is done using DNS and URL verification can be done by adding a file onto your website. Uh, note that enabling 
uh, advanced website indexing cannot be reversed and there is an additional cost for this enhanced services. Now I know what you're saying, uh, additional to what, right? How much is all this gonna cost? Well, that's a, that's a good question. So let's take a, a closer look at how pricing works. Uh, pricing is broken down into two main areas, number of queries and amount of data. So let's talk about the data first since it's pretty simple. $5 per gig per month and you get the first 10 gig free. So a thousand page website, it's only a couple of bucks a month, assuming that you've already used your free quota. Right, that's pretty reasonable. Um, now, search is divided into a few areas. You have standard edition, which covers all of your structured and unstructured documents. Enterprise edition adds the ability to index websites, perform image search, and get answers. And the LLM add-on provides all the Gen AI features and its price separately. So let's, let's take a look at an ex a pricing example. So here we have a pricing example of a document search use case. So let's take a look at uh, the assumptions first. We have a million queries per year for each of uh, the standard and enterprise editions, and we have another 1 million Gen AI queries. There's also 50 gigabytes of documents to index. So when we look at the numbers for all this, we'll see that the, uh, it will cost approximately $1,000 a month if all of our assumptions hold true. Now, if you need help uh, pricing your own use case, just get in touch and I will help you calculate uh, your estimate. Okay, so getting started is, is really simple. You'll just need to log into the console, you create or pick an existing project, then navigate over to the Vertex AI service from the menu and start configuring your search app. And if any of these three things are obstacles for you in any way, we are here to help. Just reach out and together we will break down any barriers uh, that you have to search. So here are some helpful links uh, to help you get going quickly. You can find these listed below the video. These are some great resources uh, to help you get started. And with that, it is demo o'clock. So let's build some search apps. We're gonna be indexing three data sources and building three different uh, search apps. So let's take a, a closer look at what we'll be doing here. First, we're gonna index uh, Google, the Google Cloud documentation website. Next, we'll index some Kaggle movie data as structured JSON. And finally, we're gonna index some investor PDFs from Google's parent company, Alphabet. We will cover some configuration settings and show how to integrate into external sites and applications. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the Google Cloud console. I've created a project and selected it. It's called Gen AI Demo 1. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate over to the, uh, the Vertex Search and Conversation page we do that through the navigation menu here. Um, you can see that I've actually pinned it uh, for ease of use, but if you scroll all the way down, if you don't have it pinned, you'll find it under the artificial intelligence uh, section, search and conversation. Um, you can also just search for search and find it that way. So however you get here, um, the first time that you do visit this page, you're gonna to have to uh, enable the API. We do that by clicking the continue and activate the API button here. And this only takes a couple of seconds uh, to, to turn that on. And now we are clear to configure and set up our search engines. Um, before we do, just let's take a peek at the API that we just enabled. And if we scroll down, we see it's called the Discovery Engine API. And if I click on it, and I go over here to the Quotas tab, I can scroll down a bit, and you can see all the quotas for all the different areas of the, uh, the API here. Um, the one that I wanted to focus on here was the number of documents. And you can see that that's set to 1 million. So if you need more than 1 million documents, 
um, you'll just need to do a quota increase request. So you would just select that, come over here to edit quotas, uh, put in the limit that you would like to request and submit request. And if it's a reasonable request, it, it should happen fairly quickly um, and you'll be off and running. All right, so let's head back over to the uh, Search and Conversation screen, and we're going to start by just clicking the <clears throat> New App button. Just get right into creating a search app. So the first app we're going to create it's, uh, is going to be called a, a search app here. We'll select Search. We're going to leave the Enterprise Edition features and the Advanced LM features just turned on for now. We're going to name this app Google Cloud Docs. We're going to call the company name Google Cloud Docs. Those are the two fields that are required. Um, we picked uh, the region we're going to leave here as global. We'll continue. Uh, now, the first thing we're going to have to do is uh, create a data store because we don't have one uh, to select. So we'll click this uh, create a new data store button. And here are our data sources. We're going to select the website URLs. And for the website URL, we are going to choose um, cloud.google.com slash star. So that'll be all the, the Google Cloud uh, documentation. And we're going to leave advanced website indexing turned off because we have not uh, verified this domain. Um, so since we don't own the domain, we aren't going to be able to uh, verify it. But if, uh, if this was your own website, you could go through the verification process and then turn on that advanced indexing. So we're going to click continue here and we're going to give it a name and the name is going to be website. We'll click create. So continuing on with our app application creation, we're going to pick the website that we, we just set up. Now we're going to create our application, which is a search engine with a website uh, configured as the data source. And we can come over here to preview We'll put in document AI, hit enter, and now we can see our results from the, the website. Um, I can click on a result and it'll take me right there. So you can see that um, uh, we just created a search engine and a data store and indexed a website and performed a search on that website in just a couple of minutes. So we could now integrate that website or integrate that search into our website. So if we come over here to the integration menu, you can see we can integrate as a widget or an API. Let's look over here at the API for a second. So if you wanted to put this in, uh, you know, custom, build it into your website or build it into search into an application that you have, this is how you would do it. You would uh, simply uh, make an API uh, post with your query, which is document AI. And this will allow us to test it out in Cloud Shell so we can see you know, you know, kind of how, um, how it would return a response. So if we run this in Cloud Shell, so it uh, put the command, this curl command in, if I hit enter, I will authorize that to run. It'll run as me. I'll put in my password. And there's my JSON response back. So I've got a page of search results back as a JSON response that I can customize uh, and integrate into my website or application. Just that easy. So let's come back over and take a look at the widget integration. So I can integrate this widget uh, into my website pretty easily. I'm going to make this set this to public access. And for testing, I'm going to run it 
in a code pen test environment. So I know that the code pen domain is uh, this, this domain here. And this will allow this widget to run on that site. So I'm going to click Save. And that saved this configuration. I can now copy this code snippet. Click copy here, and I'll come over to my code pen uh, demo environment here and just paste that, that snippet in. And you see that it presents as an input box, and it's simply going to run this JavaScript uh, against this configuration ID when the trigger ID which is the search widget trigger here, uh, search widget trigger is clicked. So if I click this, it should trigger the widget. And there it is. Now you can see it says configuration not authorized on this domain. And we just configured it to, we authorized it to run on that domain. So what's going on here? <clears throat> so if we come up back here where we authorize it, we can see that it says changes may take up to 30 minutes to apply. I've never seen it take 30 minutes, uh, usually it, it does take a few minutes. So this um, may not work right off the right off the bat. So we'll have to come back here in a couple of minutes and uh, and check it again. So in the meantime, let's go back and create a, a, another application. So this time, we'll click new app, we're going to click search again, we're going to again, leave everything um, the way it is. This time, our app is going to be called Movies. And we're just going to click Continue here. Now the movie data is in a cloud storage bucket uh, that's publicly available. So we're going to create our data source. We're going to pick cloud storage as our source. And we're going to put the path to the storage bucket there. And the type of data this is, is it's JSON, <clears throat> JSON uh, for structured data. And the schema will be auto detected, which is very nice. So we'll select the, that data type and click continue. And here, we're going to call this one structured data, click create. And now we've created a data source. Um, on some movie data, we're going to select that one called structured data, and we'll go ahead and create our app based upon that, that data source. So here's the, um, it brings us to this, uh, the data page here where we can look at the activity and see what's going on. So we can see that there's an import in progress. And right now, there are zero items that have been indexed so far. We come over here, we can look at the schema. And we can see all of the items that are uh, that it imported and auto generated the schema. We can see that there's 23 fields that it pulled out. And all of the fields are retrievable, indexable, searchable, facetable, automatically uh, based on the auto. Um, and any documents that are brought in will show up here and you can see they're already starting to come in and we can we can look at them here. We come back over to the activity tab, we can keep our eye on uh, when this <clears throat> actually finishes. Um, and we can come over here and preview anything that may already be in the index. So let's see if we can do a search for something like Google. Okay, not yet. So it's it's not available to be searched yet <clears throat> while it's uh, indexing. Try this one more time. Still not ready. So we'll allow that to go ahead and index. And in the meantime, let's go back and check on our, our widget over here. I'm going to click Save. 
and I'm going to refresh this page. And it's still not authorized, so we haven't given it enough time. We'll, we'll let that uh, continue to wait, and we will move on and create another app. So we're going to create another one. It's going to be another search app. This one is going to be the Alphabet Investor PDFs. We'll click continue there. And this one is also a cloud storage bucket with publicly available data. So I'm going to select that put in this path, and this is PDF file, so this is simply unstructured documents. So that's the one we're going to, to use. We're gonna call this one unstructured data, create that data source, select the data source, and create our app. So this one here, um, is quite a few documents and it does take several minutes <clears throat> um, to fully index. So you can see we have a documents and an activity tab, any documents that are brought in be uh, available for viewing there and the activity we can monitor here. So let's go and see if we can do a search on our movies and here, we wanted to search for Google. All right, so what you see is it brought back the actual JSON as output in the search, right? And then that's what it returned. And that's not really what we're looking for here. So we're gonna have to uh, make some adjustments to the display of this widget. So if we come into the configurations menu and we configure fields in the results, you can see that there are some pre-canned uh, fields available for us to select against our structured data. So we can, for instance, pick a title, a thumbnail, URL, and we have just some various text fields that we can also choose to display in the widget. So we can populate these with the fields from, from our data. So our title is called title. Our thumbnail is called poster path. Our URL is called home page. And for some text fields, we'll put in, for a movie, we'll put in the tagline and we will put in the release date. And we're going to click Save and Publish. So if we come back over to Preview and do a search for Harry Potter, see that we get back uh, search results that look a lot better. Right? We have our uh, nice image here. We have a title that we can click on, and it'll take us out to the uh, to the site. So. Good, much better search results than getting back a JSON response. So again, we can take, take um, this and integrate it much the same way we, we did earlier. Make this public access, pick our code pen site, save that, copy our snippet, and notice it still has the same um, trigger name. So we'll, we'll just have to make that different so that they don't conflict. Right, we'll call that search trigger two. And this was searching movies. The other one was search the website, which should be working by now. So if we click this, yep, we don't get the error now. So document AI was our search there. And now you can see that outside of Google's cloud, we are making a request in and getting back uh, Google quality search results. 
that we can now have on our site. So quite easy uh, to get the search results embedded into another place and up and running very quickly. So if we do a search on the movies, we'll have to wait for that configuration to be available. So we can come over and check on our Alphabet Investor. Let's look at the data here. You see that there's some, some documents now. We can check the activity. It did complete. So now we can come over here and preview and run a search for Google revenue in 2008. You can see we're getting a generative AI response back here. So we get a, a generative AI answer response here and we get our organic search results here that we could click on and, and read as you would expect. So again, we can take this just like the previous uh, uh, configurations and allow this to run outside copy this, come down here, we'll call this one search trigger three. And this would be searching the PDFs. So we know the search website, that one works, search movies, this one still, let's go ahead and click save and refresh. Let's see if that helps. Nope, and no. So these two, we need to wait out. Um, I do have, I do have another configuration where these are already set up. So document AI should give us back a response from the web. Search for very Potter here, <clears throat> we get back our movies response from that search that we built and here, search for Google revenue in 2008, we get our generative response and our search results. So we, we have built three apps on three data sources, and we can have integrated those out into another um, application. So there you go. Um, I'd like to thank you for attending today's session. Hopefully you learned something and are excited to start building your own search solutions. Uh, don't forget to send an email to ai-support at sweetbriar.com if you have any questions or need some help. And uh, as a side note, I'm going to be hosting another session fo focused on the Vertex AI conversation uh, next month. So be sure and keep an eye out for an invite and join us to learn just how easy it is to add chat bots to your website or your application. And with that, I'm going to say thank you again and goodbye.